welcome to the Heartification Podcast, where I interview people on how art has affected their lives and what it means to them. Art has a very special place in my life. It not only makes me feel happy, but it allows me to make others feel special. This podcast is all about how art has made an impact on others' lives for all ages, all backgrounds, and all walks of life. You can find more about this podcast guest in my show notes. Without further ado, let's welcome my next guest. She is a soul teacher and coach, modern self-help course creator, and speaker. Please welcome my next guest, Katie Fenn. So how do you define art? So I define art as anything that you're doing that is an expression of you that comes from inside that then you're putting out into the world in some way externally. Do you consider meditation to be an art? Meditation can be an art. I think that meditation can, if you're guiding yourself through an inward journey, that is an art. And if you are, the way that you do that and the way that you access that can be a very personal, personal art form. But then there's also, I think, for people who can't use meditation in that way, because I think that that takes quite a bit of skill sometimes to, to be able to access meditation as an art, that it helps people, though, tap into the space where all their other artistic ideas will flow from. What art forms do you find when you're working with women in meditation? I think that when we're, whenever I'm working with women in meditation, the main thing that comes up is their own creative impulses, whatever that is. So whether it's that they feel inspired to have a conversation in a certain way, or they get inspired to change and design their life in a different way, or they get inspired to create something like a storybook or a painting or anything else, Whatever that thing is that wants to be born through them um, is, is what I end up helping them access through meditation. I think that when it comes to women, as I'm guiding them through meditations, it's more so just creating a container for them to go back to the blank canvas. So I think that that's really what it's about. Same with in partnership. Like all that I can really do is sit with someone with no as seeing them as a blank canvas because everyone's carrying stories about who they are and who they should be and and how they should be feeling or whatever else and my job is just to mirror back to them that blank canvas of like okay well who are you in this moment and who do you want to be and what do you want to create next if there were no stories no limitations on what that on what that was and I think that's ultimately my job I think that some people get get drawn to my work because they're inspired by what I've created with my life thinking of my life as an art but ultimately, in my one-on-one work with people or on retreats or in that, the deeper work with people, it's more so my work just to hold space for them to come back to their blank canvas state. And whether that happens through asking them the right questions or sitting with them in meditation or whatever else, that's ultimately what it's about, is, is creating that space for them to go back to that. There's many ways for people to access their own blank slate. slate. But I think in, in partnership and in, in, and in my work, it's been no different. Like remembering that you can always choose again, that like any story that you've told yourself about your life and about who you are can always be changed. You can always make something new. And that's what I get excited to, to show people is just, and then I'm just that's like, if they're, I take them back to being blank canvas. And then I'm like, here, use these paintbrushes. Like what do you want to paint? And just give them the tools. And then from there, then they paint. I find for me, the most powerful ones are when people when they get to blank slate, what they end up painting is moving to a different city or, or leaving the comfort of their community, wherever they are, because they're really being called to pay, you know, to be somewhere new. I think that takes a lot of courage. Like it's one thing to want to change things when you're in your city, you're in your community. It's another really fascinating thing to me when someone decides, you know what, in my heart of hearts, what I really want to paint is a life in London or a life in New York or a life. I think that that takes a tremendous amount of courage to, to do that. And to me, those are the most powerful ones. And anytime, which happens often, like anytime someone breaks the molds of what the expectations were from them and paints what they actually want to paint, as opposed to like coloring in the lines, that to me is the best. So if people, you know, whenever they choose to, especially with like family's expectations or friends' expectations on who you should be, I think that that those are the most powerful ones. If someone decides, you know what, actually like this way that I've been, you know, communicating with my family doesn't work for me anymore. This role of caregiver that everyone expects from me doesn't work anymore. 
And I think that all those types of moves to reclaim who you are takes a lot of courage. And those to me are the most, most powerful ones. And what art forms are you exposed to? I am exposed primarily to writing, I would say as an art form more so than anything else. That and dance for sure. But in terms of an art form, I would say that those are the two biggest ones that are sort of on my radar are sort of movement practices um, as an art form and then writing as an art form. And what art forms are you drawn to? Modern art, because I, if you think about the way that we process information, there's our left brain, which is logical and linear and intellectual and creates words for things that we're experiencing. And our right side of our brain is abstract. It doesn't have words to describe what's happening. It's pure feeling. And there actually aren't words really to describe so much of what's being processed and moved through in our right brain. And I think why I love abstract art is that it allows me to look at something without trying to make meaning of it and just appreciating it and appreciating how abstract it is and to appreciate just the colors and the patterns and things like that. I think there's so few places where we actually get to access a way just to be purely in our awareness, purely in our creativity. And for that reason, I think I love it for, for the fact that like, I actually just don't create any words or narratives around what I think it means or what I like about it or anything else. I just like to take in the colors and the shapes and, and the randomness of it and really enjoy it in that way. Are you attracted to any particular artist? Yes and no. Again, it, it'll depend sort of on where I'm at um, in my own life. If I were to pick one artist, there's a Toronto-based artist named Nicole Charles. I love her work. It's very abstract. And I just, I think it's amazing. Um, and then in terms of writing, there's actually an astrologer who writes these beautiful um, words about what's happening in the planets. And her words are, they really touch me deeply. And so she as a writer is one of my favorite writers as an artist right now. And did art help you get through the difficult times in your life? Art has helped me get through the difficult times in my life. So I had a really, um, there were a lot of stressful things that happened when I was um, a child growing up. And I think that I, during that time, would dance all the time. I would creative write or write in my journal all the time. Um, and I think that those two things, plus any other like art projects I was doing at school, really helped me to get through it, to, to express, to feel big feelings, to move through them, and ultimately to access joy um, during those times. My Heartification Project is all about giving back to the community, specifically to those with disabilities and illnesses. So how do you give back to the community? Well, I, that changes sort of based on where, where I'm at and what I'm doing. So in the past, I used to work a lot one-on-one -on -one with organizations that work with youth or young offenders because those are two parts of the population that I really like to help. But as I've shifted in the work that I'm doing now, it's mainly just supporting those organizations that help those different populations of young people or young offenders, or more so lately, I've also been supporting an organization um, that works with women who need shelters or resources and things like that. And so just becoming a monthly donor has been really a, a way to impact. And other than that, I just, I say yes to pretty much most talks in the community as long as I can do them. And so just showing up in the community, sharing messages, that I think is a really other powerful way to really help a lot. So how would you like people to get in touch with you? People can get in touch with me by going to my website, which is katiefenn.com. My Instagram is also my name, Katie Fenn. Uh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Remember, if you want to find out more about this guest, please go to my show notes where I have all the links needed. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe to my podcast series and help me by sharing it, leaving a rating, and a comment. I hope you join me on my next podcast. Bye for now.